heard we're going to get started. Welcome to Survive to Thrive. Happy Thursday, and let's get started. So if you have your notes from Tuesday, I'm going to do a quick recap, and then we're going to move from the economic model to the lead generation model. And let's see if I can get this set up and you can see it. All right, you got a good start. So A plus B plus C equals D. D divided by E equals F. F multiplied by G equals H and I. Let's pick up right there, okay? A is beginning with the end in mind. This is your economic model. What's my net income? If my net income goal is $100,000, then that's A. That's how much money I get to keep. B is my cost of sales. That's the money that goes to the broker. That's the money that goes to agents if they're a part of my team. That's the money that goes to a referral fee, for example. C is your expenses. So marketing expenses, lead generation expenses, and so on. And you take A plus cost of sales plus expenses, and you're going to come up with your gross income. And I'm pretty sure the number we used on Tuesday was $140,000. So gross commission income. The next step is we're going to take the gross commission income and we're going to divide that by our average commission. And that's going to tell us how many sales we need to close. If our average commission is $10,000, then we need to close 14 sales. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that number and we are going to um, multiply it by the percentage of business that we do on the listing side and the percentage of business that we do on the buyer side. So if I have a 50-50 model, in other words, seven of my sales are coming from listings and seven are coming from buyers, then on the left side over here, I have seven listings closed. And on the right side, I have the same thing, seven buyers closed. Now, in order to close seven listings, I need to know how many, what's the percentage of listings I take that close. Now, a year ago, that number probably would have been 90, 95%, maybe 100%. We're not in that market anymore. We're in a market where, as all of you know who are closing deals, it's very difficult to get to the closing table. Matter of fact, you have sales that don't close. So the number we want to use is 75%. What you want to do is you want to take seven and divide it by... 0.75 in order to determine how many listings you need to take. Now, I'm gonna round it up and we'll just say that number is nine. So I need nine listings in order to close seven. Now, the next number that I need to know is what's my conversion ratio from, an, from a listing appointment to a listing taken? If my conversion ratio is 50%, then I'm gonna need 18 appointments. Now I know how many listing appointments I need to go on in order to be able to take nine listings in order to close seven. The numbers on the buyer side are very, very similar. Um, couple differences. So the conversion ratio from an appointment to a buyer agreement signed will probably be lower than your conversion ratio from a listing appointment to a listing taken. Not because they don't hire you, it's because you're choosing to turn down the opportunity if they don't have if they have goals or expectations that you cannot meet or exceed. In other words, you're doing a buyer consultation with someone who has the, the, they want to buy a home, but they're ready and willing, but they're not able. Then you're not going to enter into a buyer agency agreement with them at this point because what we're looking for in a shifting market is we're looking for motivated. And we're looking for buyers who are ready, willing, and able. Any one of those three things missing, then we're not going to sign a buyer agency agreement with them. All right. Let's just say that we get down to the buyer side of this equation. And, and the answer is the same thing. Let's just say it's 18 appointments just to keep things simple. So that's a total of 36 appointments or three appointments per month. Now, the end result of the economic model is how many appointments do I need to go on in order to net the amount of money I want to net? There it is. We just figured it out. 
Now, the lead generation model is how many leads do I need in order to go on three appointments every month? Well, I'm going to start with three different buckets of opportunity for lead generation. All right. We have changing the color of the pens, contrast, we have prospecting, we have marketing, and we have repeat and referral business. Let's start with repeat and referral business. That's your database. Now, we know from the millionaire real estate agent that for every 12 agents or every 12 people, excuse me, that you have in your met database, that sphere of influence and past clients, for every 12, you should close two deals. It should be one repeat and one referral. Keep it simple and, and, and just say that 10% or let's go with a lower number, sorry. 7% of your database is going to turn into a closed transaction at the end of the year. So if I was doing 100% of my business from repeat and referral business and, and my goal is to close 14 sales, how many contacts would I need to have in my database that I am working effectively, build a database, feed it every day, communicate with it in a systematic way in order to generate a 7% return, how many, and that's repeat and referral business, how many contacts would I need to have in my database? Now, if we are marketing, and let's say marketing is farming, it is paying for leads. You, you got a pay-per-click campaign going on or you're paying realtor.com or, or, or one of the aggregates for leads. In most cases, you're going to have about a 2% conversion ratio on that. So if my goal was to close 14 sales and 100% of it was coming from marketing with a 2% conversion ratio, well, then I would need 280. Somebody check the math on that. I think I'm right. 280 leads in order to close 14 sales. Give me a moment. <laughs> it's going to bug me if I get that wrong. So 280 times 0 0.02. I'm wrong. All right. One of you, if you would, Nathan, can you help me with that? How many how many leads do I need in order to close 14 if I have a 2% conversion ratio? I have 5.6. That, that's, that's what I came up with. <laughs> and I know that's wrong. So, okay. So 1% of 100 is 1. 1% 1 of 1,000 is 10. If it's... 7%, take 14 divided by 7%. Maybe that's 19.6. Let's, <clears throat> Let's try 6%. Five. So 5%. Hold on a second, guys. I've got it. It's 700. It's 700 leads in order to close 14. That's using a 2% conversion ratio. I would need 700 leads in order to close 14 sales. Now, if you're doing pay-per-click, for example, like realtor.com or Zillow or one of the other aggregates, on average, those leads are going to cost you about $20 a piece. So if you take 700 and you multiply that times $20, you're looking at $14,000 that you're paying for those leads. $14,000 in order to close 14 sales. It's fine. And I have real estate agents that I coach that that's pretty much 100% of their business. I have agents that are spending up to $10,000 a month on this. And if that's the way you want to go, that's awesome. It wouldn't be what I would do. But it is one of the things that you could do. If you're farming, it's a long game. You're not going to farm 500 homes and get 10 closings the first year, it's going to take time for you to get the return. If you're farming, the ratios that they use in the millionaire real estate agent is there for every 12, you get one. So we just remember, it's a long game, though. Now, over here in prospecting, 
that's for sale by owners, uh, expired listings, uh, circle prospecting, just to name a few. All right, let's focus on the low hanging fruit because I want to close 14 sales and I'm going to work my database in order to do that. I might spend money on marketing and I'm doing some marketing, but if I'm looking for business right now, then I'm what the low hanging fruit is where I want to spend most of my time and most of my effort. Now, if I am making, if I have a standard that I am going to prospect every single day until I have 20 conversations and at least one appointment booked every day, then in a year's time, if I'm working 250 days a year, that's 50 weeks times five days, then that means I have 250 opportunities in my pipeline because my standard is 20 contacts a day and one appointment booked every day. Now that's 250 potential sellers because I'm focusing on sellers. And the next step is what's my follow-up plan? in order to create emotional proximity. We're knowing that the time from the initial appointment to reaching that point where they become serious about selling their home, we're talking for sell by owners and expireds, on average, just say it's two or three months. I have to have a systematic plan in place in order to follow up with them. So I'm the agent when they get, when they get serious about selling their home. And if my conversion ratio is 10%, Sounds awful, right? 10% of 250 means I failed 90% of the time, but it also means that I got 25 seller listings. Now let's go back to the left side of the page. How many seller listings did we need in order to close 14 sales? Nine. So is it could I get nine seller listings by prospecting one appointment every day with either an expired or for sell by owner and then following up until they got serious about selling their home and knowing that 10% over time will hire me as long as I follow up, then absolutely the model works. But let's go back and recap. You start with an economic model in order to know how many appointments you need to go on. That's the end result of the economic model. You start with, I want to net $100,000. My cost of sales is blank. My expenses are blank. That means I need a total of $140,000 GCI in order to net $100,000. My average commission is $10,000. That means I need to close 14 sales. 50% of my business is on the seller side. 50% is on the buyer side. That means I need to close seven sellers. 75% of the listings that I take will close. That means I need to get nine listings. I have a 50% conversion ratio from an appointment to a listing taken. That means I'm going to have to go on 18 appointments and my buyer side are, are the same numbers, just to keep it simple, which means I need a total of 36 appointments or three appointments per month in order to net $100,000. Now, the next step is the lead generation model. What am I going to do in order to get those three appointments every single month. In other words, how many leads am I going to need? And we can choose to build this business on repeat and referral business. That's all we're gonna do. We're not gonna prospect. That's cool as long as you're hitting your goals or we're gonna choose to do just marketing or we're gonna run a prospecting based business. And my suggestion to you would, would do all three. Ideally, I want a third of my business, a third of my business, and a third of my business. In other words, a third of my business is coming from prospecting, a third is coming from marketing, and a third is coming from repeat and referral business. Now, note to anybody who's at this less than a couple of years, those numbers won't necessarily work. In the beginning, you're going to be more heavy on the prospecting side than you will repeat and referral business. I mean, that just makes sense. But over time, you want all three of these. Now, there's a danger for successful real estate agents who get, who have been doing this for a long time and they're successful, remember, and all of their business comes from repeat and referral business, all right? And they're super happy about that. Cool, good for you. Here's the challenge. When the market shifts, the phone's gonna stop ringing. And if you wait to react, there's going to be a period of time between the shift and when you go this ain't working i gotta change what i'm doing okay 
I'm going to start prospecting now. There's going to be a period of time between those two events that you're going to lose a lot of money. My advice to you would be, don't wait for the market to shift. Get into the habit of, of running a prospecting-based marketing and enhanced real estate business right now. And over time, when the market shifts from more to less, your sales are going to stay the same because you're, you're generating leads from all three um, opportunities. And there's a lot more opportunities in that prospecting bucket when the market shifts than there were when the market was doing really, really well. Don't wait to react. All right. Questions, comments? <laughs> You know how uh, there's been times in your life you go to church and you're like, how in the world is the preacher knowing my situation hmm. today? You know, and um, that's what happened when I first met you. Um, I, I I've been I've had a an amazing referral based business for years. Hmm. Um, in fact to the point where, you know, I, I did not do um, the other two buckets, mm -hmm. you know, and it was very fulfilling. And, but then um, the shift happened mm -hmm. and the phone stopped ringing. And then you, you start playing all these silly games in your mind. Like, man, I'm, I'm not, what's wrong with me? Uh, um, I don't have it anymore. Just all kind of different things, different thoughts come to my mind. In fact, you know, um, just recently I ran into a situation where I found out one of my past clients sold a house and didn't use me. And so then I got to a point where I started going back and looking to see, well, what did I do? What was I not doing in terms of like staying in touch with them? And, and I found out like, you know, I got into the place where I even stopped nurturing my, my past clients. It's crazy. But I found out like my this client, she passed away and I felt so sad. I felt so bad inside. Like I felt bad that she passed away. I really did because I, I knew her situation and I knew how happy she was when she got the house. But I was really feeling bad about like I wasn't there to help her and her family yeah. in a time like this. And so that's why you, you're just preaching to me um, a big time, John. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. And it, it's always a better coaching call when you share, Nathan. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, by the way, you're like everybody else. We've all done that. Say again, John. I said, you're like everybody else. We've we've all done that, mm -hmm. right? You know, it, it, the mistakes I've made, both as, both as a real estate agent in production and as a leader building either an office or a team, I've made the same mistake. I've gotten comfortable and stop doing the things that got me there okay. and then wondered why, why am I not here anymore? Well, you're not here because you stopped doing the things that got you there. Right. All right. Give me some ahas, guys. I'll jump in, John. Thank you. I feel like, so <laughs> still, I still consider myself newer i'm entering into my fifth year in real estate and i was very focused on my sphere and marketing in my community mm -hmm. and so i'm at a point now where i feel like my marketing has made my name and my brand more visible and aware okay. but i'm needing to do more traditional prospecting and so okay. that's why i'm so thrilled to have found myself here yeah. I think that's something that's missing in my business because people that know and like and trust me will use me for business, but that portion of business is only so big. And so I'm thrilled to add that more traditional aspect in to mm -hmm. see how the next 12 months plays out. There you go. It's going to play out really well, by the way. All right. One more. I never should say that, Gina. But, there we go. But, uh, Thank you, Clarissa. You saved me. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a question. Yeah. Um, did you tell us when we're doing um, business planning? Yeah, I have not because okay. I, haven't, I haven't selected a date yet. 
So it's coming, Clarissa. Okay. Yeah. And in the meantime, you're getting small pieces of it. Small pieces. Yeah. Now and then. Right. I yes. can take this coaching session uh, on video, by the way. So if you missed it, just look at our Survive to Thrive page. It's there. And then I can take what we got today and I've got what I need in order to, uh, between the economic model, how many homes do I need uh -huh. to sell in order to net the amount of money I want to net? How many appointments do I need to go on in order to get the number of agreements I need in order to sell the number of homes that I want to sell? Okay, end result, three appointments per month. Cool. Lead generation model. How many leads do I need in order to schedule three appointments every month? Now I've got those two pieces in right. place. And because I track my numbers, I know exactly how many people I need to talk to every day in order to schedule the number of appointments that I need to schedule in order to get the number of agreements I need to get in order to close the number of deals I need to close. Oh. Right. All right. So one of the pieces that I'm also, well, I finally the light bulb came on with the yeah. um, economic and lead mm -hmm. generation models. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm trying to hone in on the GPS and 411 so that when I get in the office, it's there in front of me every day what activities I have to do to make sure that I'm hitting the number of contacts and that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You know that. Are you guys seeing that on the screen? Yes. Okay, so what what Clarissa was just referring to was a GPS, uh, also known as a 135. So you've got your one major goal here at the top. Um, that's the G. Uh, you have three priorities that are going to get you to the goal that you want to achieve. And then on, underneath each of the priorities, you have five strategies that you're going to put into play. This is your game plan in order to... Um, under each one of these priorities in order to achieve the goal. We'll do a deep dive on that one day. I love that nifty little sheet. Are you gonna share? I created it. <laughs> I know, it's gorgeous. All right. I didn't like the black and white thing that was provided. I was like, no, I could do better than that. Right, I've 